Well, good afternoon. Um, us changing this to Monday, I feel like I just saw you, uh, which is which is a really positive, good thing. Um, looking at the film, we made some good things, did some really good things, made some mistakes that we've got to clean up. I think we we'll have their attention um, because there's some things, uh, um, different things, just some detail, um, some recognition uh, of of running the correct route or the correct depth, maybe a blocking scheme that got uh, – screwed up a couple of times uh, we talked about on Saturday night. Uh, we kind of didn't blow the coverage, but didn't get the best leverage with the coverage. Um, so we've got some things we've got to get shored up um, this week, and we have, in essence, a pretty short week because our, our Friday gets rolling really early um, with some meetings and walkthroughs before we head on the plane to head to New Orleans. How big is the difference going from a Willie Fritz coach team to a John, John Summerall coach team? Well, um, you know, John was at Troy, and, and he was here last year. Uh, he's a terrific coach. They've got a really good scheme. You know, we've watched we watched all the Troy film from last year when we played them last year, and now we're, it seems like we're watching them again because um, I mean, we just have the one game. But it's, it's a really well-coached team. Uh, it's a lot of similarities offensively and defensively from scheme. I'm, I'm sure there's going to be some differences just because you got to have your personnel match your scheme. Um, but um, – you know, it's a really well-coached team. They've got really good players. We know we're going to play in a really tough environment. When you look back at the last game, was there a position on offense that you ended up thinking played better than you thought live? Um, well, I don't think anybody played poorly live. We just probably made a few mistakes that – uh, hopefully we can clean up from game one to game two. I thought our running backs ran really well. I thought DJ made some really good cuts. Uh, I was pleased with getting Joe Jackson a few carries and then uh, awesome to get LeJames uh, White the touchdown because Jimmy deserves it. He's worked hard for a number of years, and it was good to see him. So give me your breakdown of Tulane offensively. Offensively, um, terrific running back. It starts with him. Uh, they've got uh, – I think he was freshman of the year, and he's an all-conference all kid coming back. Um, they're really good up front, and uh, they're trying to get him touches, and, and he's extremely talented downhill guy, um, a, a young quarterback that had a lot of success in the first week. Uh, they have really good skill kids outside, but they, they, they have so much experience up front in the offensive line um, and with that running back. That, yeah, obviously that's the first thing we have to be able to do is, is try to control. You're not going to shut down the run game. you got to try to control it a little bit. Quite a bit of the defensive personnel played here, or some of it played here a couple of years ago. I think ago. a few of them did, yeah. Um, what did that defense do to you that day two years ago that frustrated your offense so much? Um, well, the biggest thing is we, we – didn't convert on fourth down, if I recall. Um, we missed out on a couple of uh, fourth and shorts. So that was the big thing. I thought the biggest thing that, that that crew did, now it's a different football team, theirs and ours, is they tackled so well. I know both teams have changed a lot since you guys played two years ago, but is there any kind of revenge mentality with the coaches or players heading into this? You know, I don't think so. Maybe had it been the same staff um, with Coach Fritz uh, potentially, and I, I couldn't tell you uh, how many guys they still have uh, on that team. I know there's there's a handful. We have um, a handful that played in that game, and a lot of guys that were a part of the, the team um, – uh, that probably remembers the loss. I, I, you know, guys like Mott and Austin, guys that played a, a, a ton. Those guys probably remember uh, a lot more. Um, but uh, no, you can't think of it as as that. We've, we're getting an opportunity to go on the road. I think it's important for this group to go on the road because we're going to have to win some games on the road to uh, have a successful season. Seven a.m. kick in New Orleans. Man, it's going to be hot and humid. Do you do anything special to prepare for that? You know, it's all week, actually. Uh, you don't want to just get up and say, here's what we got to do on Saturday morning. It's it's the hydration all week. Uh, it's recovery. It's taking care of your body. It's nutrition. It's sleep. Um, you know, we'll do some specific things uh, with our athletic training staff and, and our nutrition staff and strength staff as the week continues to progress. But, you know, it's individual accountability. You guys got to take care of their bodies. When it comes to Avery, how much does, you know, game situation, score, all that stuff, how much does that factor in when you decide to run him versus pass him? We saw him around a few times this last game. He obviously is good at it, yeah. but 
I know you don't want to do it all the time. Yeah, I think some of it was the looks we were seeing. Um, he had a couple of times where he pulled the football and, and, and ran. That was a design give, but they, they closed so fast on the running back that he pulled it and was able to make a big play. Um, the design runs were are less right now um, than in the past seasons. Um, twofold on that one, it's a long season, as well as um, we feel we're doing some better things in the throw game um, and have some things that we probably didn't get a chance to get to or didn't use uh, this first week that we're excited about. That it, Whether or not it's this next week, the next few weeks, I mean, we're – um, still a, a little bit of a work in progress in the past game, but I know we're, we're working on it every day and, and getting better. You guys, you guys were able to cycle in several guys at punt returner. What did you like out of what you saw out of who was there, and is that kind of going to be the plan? Going yeah, forward? no, we wanted to get um, both Sterling and Dylan back there. I thought that, we, and, and we had Jacob Parrish back there as well um, because you know we had Philip Brooks here for. Uh, a long time ever since I was here returning punts and so uh, all those guys had done it in practice and we wanted to give everybody an opportunity because we just thought you know the chance of you having your one and only punt returner all year long um, may, maybe isn't the best so we want to make sure and give all those kids an opportunity um, you know Jacob probably will do it a little bit more when it's a, a punt safe or in our territory and then um, you know Dylan and, and Sterling um, catch the ball really well, and, and we want to give both an opportunity. Jacob came out first after Avery Avery was sat, led, led you guys to a touchdown. Is he kind of taking a little bit of an edge in, in that backup quarterback? Race? No. Um, I think they both are doing – once we got to that situation, and I can't remember when we put Jacob in um, you know, early in the fourth quarter, I, I communicated with Coach Wells. Um, that uh, we'd go with Jacob next uh, for a number of reasons. Um, maybe because he's been here a little bit longer, because it's still a dead heat, but we, we were hoping to get uh, another possession so we could get Taekwon one as well. Um, and so they both are, are battling still on a daily basis, but uh, I saw some good things out of both guys and, and, and both needed to get their feet wet and play a game of college football here at, at K-State. Asa didn't play. I think Austin Moore had to leave. Yep. What's their status going into the next? Um, uh, we pulled Austin Moore precautionary uh, at halftime. He'd been dealing with something and uh, w was was feeling good, but um, uh, we pulled him and so we could use Rex Van Wy a little bit more. Rex needed those reps, and then Asa just wasn't uh, ready to play with something he was dealing with, and and. We'll see how practice goes this week, but uh, we're opt more optimistic this week than we were last. How do you feel the uh, new faces on the offensive line performed in game action? You know, I was really impressed with Sam Hecht. I think he's one that kind of goes unheralded when you think of he's a quiet kid anyway, but he's playing a really critical position for us from a communication standpoint, from a call, a call and ID stuff to um, snaps and you know, operationally, we were really good uh, on Saturday. We didn't have any poor snaps. Um, we we had really good timing on some of our jet sweep series. Um, we were we were great with the with the play clock with our quarterbacks and our centers. And I thought Cap did a good job. Capri came in and got 13 snaps and did a really good job. But uh, you know, Sam's probably the one that jumps out at me that I was really impressed with. Coach Cumberland was always <clears throat> excuse me prided himself on his defense and mm -hmm. you know I think Tulane is also under Fritz built this defense that's really talented what stands out about coach Summerall's defense that makes them difficult to well play they're against? sound for starters um, they played uh, they've always played really good defense uh, I've got a lot of respect for them they play hard they know um, their scheme and they know you know where their strengths are and some of the things where they've got to be able to shore up some things just like every defense says every defense knows you have maybe not a true weakness, but an area that is susceptible. Um, and I don't know how much it looks very similar, um, but it's one game. Uh, I'm sure there's some other tweaks and, and other things that they're doing defensively that they haven't shown yet because they didn't need to last week. Um, similar to us, we got a lot of things that we haven't shown yet. I think that's part of the chess match of early season football. 
of what are you going to show in the first week um, based on your opponent, based on the score, what can you hold back. I think they're they're probably in the same reign as we are as far as we, we didn't show everything they didn't. It still comes down to do you get off blocks and do you tackle and those uh, they did last week for sure and they always did at Troy. Coach, your team showed a lot of remarkable discipline against UT Martin, committing committing zero penalties while capitalizing on their own mistakes. How do you incorporate the discipline in a relatively young squad, and how essential will it be as the season progresses? Well, something we preach every every day uh, of having great discipline, and great discipline is not just eliminating the – for me, it's the pre-snap penalties. You can't have false starts, and you can't have delay games and offsides, and – uh, I thought we did a really good job of that. Some of the things during the snap, you're, you're, you're going to have a hold once in a while. You're going to have a pass interference once in a while. Um, I thought our guys did a good job of playing with really good technique. Uh, and then the post-snap penalties, we have to, we, we've got to not have those, a personal foul, a late hit, whatever it may be. Well, we emphasize it. We talk about it. Um, our kids know how important it is to play a clean game and, you know, Two things we pride ourselves on is uh, explosive plays and preventing them. And I think it was 13 to three uh, in that battle uh, on Saturday, the, limiting the penalties. That one area that um, we weren't good in is turnovers. We turned it over twice and, and didn't get a turnover. So to be down two in the turnover margin already um, is is not a good thing. We've got to get that thing flipped because that's uh, the biggest sign of of, of um, maybe not having discipline or, or not going to be able to overcome it when you when you turn the ball over twice. Now, the block punt kind of takes a lot of that away because we block and score on that play. With uh, with Toby, how, how far has he come as far as uh, adjusting to the defensive end position? And also, do you see him being more, at this point, just a pass rush specialist? Or Yeah. Yeah. Um, He's come a long way from spring when we moved him over there, and he was really learning how to play the position, um, but um, put his heart into it and said this is his best way to, to make a great contribution, uh, put on a little bit of weight, got a little bit stronger in the summer, and then really worked, continued to work on his pass rush skills. Um, we don't want him to be a third down specialist right now. That's his best role, but we don't want that. We're fortunate with the amount of defensive ends that we do have that we can rotate a little bit by down and distance um, with the guys we have. Um, now, obviously, we have to make sure that Toby's ready to play every down because tempo will change that, and he's getting better and better at playing playing the run and understanding it. Um, but uh, I, I've been really pleased with his uh, progress um, since we moved him uh, last last winter. Coach, I was, I was noticing after the game that so many of the guys that played significant roles in the victory, Avery, Dylan, DJ, um, the block punt was a Kansan. Uh, you, you, Toby and Des are Kansans. Uh, it just seemed like the heart and soul of this team is even more so Kansas this year. Yeah, I, I guess I don't look at it like that um, during the flow of a game or after a game. Um, it's something that's really important to us in the recruiting process and really important to, I think, the fan base that um, comes from all over the state to come to our games that, uh, uh, A, we put on a really good product and we give the kids in this state an opportunity to be successful. And, you know, I, I think you look at a kid like Sam Heck that walked on here um, and uh, – Learn behind uh, Noah Johnson, a Kansas kid. Learn behind Hayden Gillum, a Kansas kid. And now it's his opportunity. And all three of those guys walked on and became starting centers in the Big 12, which I think is really cool. Um, but uh, um, we're trying to develop guys, and sometimes uh, it takes a little bit to develop. Really, Des Purnell is no different. He came in as a safety, and uh, and then we ended up moving him to linebacker, and all of a sudden it started to click for him. And, and so, no, we're, we're proud and pleased with what we're doing with Kansas kids. You mentioned earlier maybe fewer rushes uh, for the quarterback, but is that an essential part of Avery's game? It, it definitely is. A lot of times, a lot of those runs are off of reads. And take the first play of the game. Based on what they did, we were handing the ball to DJ. Okay, they took that away, and then he had the option to either flip it to Dylan or run the football. So there's a lot of those um, – 
uh, play actions or plays where there is a read where maybe he keeps it, maybe he gives it. And, and we'll see every week maybe a little bit different how teams play that too. Uh, I would assume that a lot of teams are going to play that for him to uh, make sure that he has to give the football uh, because he's so dynamic running the ball. Um, and so every week's probably going to be a little different. I don't even know how many times he carried the ball. I didn't, didn't see it three. A um, uh, couple, couple were reads. Maybe one was a de, uh, an undesigned scramble. But every week's going to probably be a little bit different. When you were recruiting Damian right here in Manhattan, how much did you get to watch him play before you got into the recruiting process? A decent amount because of Colby. You know, I, I was able to go to the games and, and saw – a guy that played the game the right way. You know, he was undersized. He would tell you the same thing. He was undersized, but uh, I just loved I loved his motor. And for week after week, watching um, Manhattan because of my son, I just kept saying, "This kid's this kid can play for us." Um, I don't know if he was going to be a defensive end. Didn't know if he was going to be a defensive tackle in our four down. Uh, then we flipped to our three down, and he put the weight on and became a really talented nose guard for us. So, um, you know, he's earned everything that he's he's received. And, and that's, it's fun to see somebody like that have the success, uh, obviously being a local kid, but putting the time and effort and work into his craft to be really good. What's impressed you the most about Darian Mensa for, for Tulane, their quarterback? I think that was his first start. Um and I thought he threw the ball really well. I thought he had control and command um, uh, of what he saw pre-snap. And I think that's the biggest thing for a young quarterback. It's something that we work on with um, with Avery and Jacob uh, is what they see pre-snap. Is it true in what you see post-snap? And he looked to have really good command of what they were doing. I want to ask you a little bit about how it went with Connor and Matt, and then also the helmet communication things, those types of deals behind the scenes? Yeah, um, I thought it uh, it went well uh, offensively with the coaches' communication. When, when you don't get into a rhythm in the first half offensively, um, it's probably not real pleasant on that headset either um, with Riles. But uh, because we couldn't get into rhythm, we couldn't get into turbos, we couldn't get back on the ball fast because we just we weren't – you know, getting the good enough uh, on first down or missing out on third down. If you get a third down play, you can come back up on the ball pretty quickly. The thing that I was pleased with on the helmet communication offensively was the quick words that I heard from Wells to the quarterbacks after the play was called of get your eyes on this guy or, you know, here's your read or whatever or a quick – hey, get us into a third and short, you know, little things like that that could trigger. And obviously it shuts off at 15. On the defensive side and the benefit of being at home um, a little bit is we used it a little bit with Austin Romaine uh, of a they, – they, and they weren't going real fast. UTM wasn't going Mach 1. So we eliminated signals a handful of times so that we could tell Austin and then he could tell – around them and then we could spread it off to the corners and stuff so it eliminated a little bit of signals I, I think I don't know if Joe did that five times or if he did it 10 or 12 times um, it's a work in progress just like the the tablets are a work in progress I enjoyed the tablets simply because if it was a TV timeout and I know I've got three plus minutes Hank would come over and I'd say hey let me see the let me see the block punt I want to see where we got it from let me see uh, how they got behind us on the on the long play that was incomplete. Let me see um, what they did against this run for us. I was able to look at things uh, a little bit and then jot my own notes, make sure I ask Rouse about this or make sure I ask Joe about this. From the sideline, I think our players were able to see, oh, if I'm a safety, hey, you were close too close to the hash. I felt I was middle of the field. Now you look at the film, oh, boy, I wasn't as close to the hash as maybe I should have been. Some some little things like that. I think that's a true work in progress, the tablets. How did you feel? Um, and I didn't actually count how many guys got in the game, but were you in the neighborhood of what you were hoping for? Yeah, we really were. I, I think we were close to 80, somewhere in there. Um, we got everybody in the backup offensive line that we wanted to get in the game. We got all the running backs that uh, 
Uh, we want. We wish we'd have gotten Cantu in there, but we got all those running backs in. We got a number of wide receivers in. Andre Davis, who's missed some time, and Andre's still going to be a really good football player for us. He's just missed some time to get him in there, um, to get a lot of those kids at uh, linebacker from Gavin Myers to Wittenberg, um, um, Tyson Struber, and getting some of these younger guys that um, – uh, are still learning the system, I think, was important. So it was it was good. And then on special teams, we, you know, whether it was a returner or kickoff, we were able to get some guys in. The kickoffs, you know, t- uh, um, Chris did a great job. We kicked most of them out of the end zone. When I say the name Braden Lofton, what comes to mind? Um, kid that uh, has worked his tail off the last – three years to get himself in position to help this team. I, one thing I've always said about Braden is he's always cared. He's always wanted to be really good. When he came in as a freshman, he knew he was undersized and needed to get bigger and stronger. Uh, and then as a redshirt freshman, he kept learning. Uh, and, and now in his third year, I just think it, you know, he's 240 some pounds. He learned a lot from Ben. He's learned a ton from Swanee and Oak. Um, and. You know, he did some really good things at the point of attack, did some really good things blocking on some perimeter runs we had. And then, you know, he, he caught the football and, and was a big target. And um, uh, quarterbacks feel really comfortable and confident with him. And, and that's a guy that, that has made himself into what he is right now. Because I think he came in maybe 210, 215 or something. Um, and it takes a while. You know, Senate was 207 or 209 when he came in here. It just takes a little bit. And I think he's done a great job with getting his body ready to play this game. Touchdown catch really quick and just how thrilled you were about that. I was ecstatic. I thought it was a great play call and play design for what they were doing. Uh, we kind of scored on two very similar plays in the throw game to the boundary. Um, we didn't think they, they were going to leverage uh, our person to the flat. And the first time it happened to be Braden, and he ran a little wheel route, and, and Avery put it on him. I was so excited for him to get in the end zone. Uh, I thought that was a big time, uh, big time play, big time call by our offense, and then we executed it. And then the same thing with Dylan; we were getting the wheel route. But um, now I was excited for Braden. On Thursday, got a day or two head start on you guys for this game. Did you do anything to try to even that out with any of your staff? No, um, we always have our head scout guys that are working on the next game. Uh, but as a, as a true coaching staff. No, we, we, you, you can't. You, you, we can't keep all that stuff squared away in our minds probably. And so we, we went back to work early Sunday morning and um, came in early again this morning. To It's a first true normal week for us. And so got a lot of stuff done Sunday. We don't see our players on Sunday. They come up on their own probably. Uh, they do treatments and watch film. Uh, and then this morning they had a lift. We met from 6 a.m. all the way up to whenever the heck we get going, about 2.40. I get a chance to meet with the quarterbacks right after this to talk uh, a little bit about what I'm seeing from their uh, defense. And it's our first full week, and so there's a lot of guys that, that are getting their first taste of what K-State football is like in a, in a normal game week.